a new temple was rebuilt. The monarchy, however, was not restored. The second temple, at least from all indications of uh, historical uh, data, um, was not as grand as Solomon's temple. Uh, the picture on this slide is a representation of a model of uh, the temple, particularly the second temple as, as uh, renovated by Herod the Great uh, in the last, uh, first, the last century BC. But still, it, with the re restoration of the temple, the restoring of the sacrifices, that did have a profound effect on Jewish worship. Things that had not been done were now being done again. And it was said that many Jews, as they returned and saw the Second Temple, left, both because for those that had uh, known the first one and kind of seen the lack of, of splendor, but also just the idea of this return. But not all the Jews that went into exile came back. Many of them stayed in Babylon. And, and so the, there's that diaspora component. Another important uh, historical event, in, or an important event in the Second Temple period, from 515 BC to uh, 70, uh, is the, the Maccabean Revolt. The Mede and Persian Empire gave way to the Greeks. Alexander the Great, from uh, Greece, Macedonia, conquered the Persian Empire and much of its territories, including Judea. Upon Alexander's death, he divided his, his empire was divided into among four generals, so four regions. Originally, the region of Judea was under the control of uh, rulers centralized in Egypt uh, after. Uh, Alexander's general Ptolemy. But it eventually passed to the control of the Seleucids centralized in Syria. One of Alexander's other rule, uh, generals was a man named Seleucus. So the control of Judea at this time is under the group centralized in Syria. The eighth Seleucid ruler was a man named Antiochus or Antiochus, depending on the uh, pronunciation, you, I've heard it both ways. Uh, Antiochus IV, known by the nickname uh, Epiphanes, which means something like God manifest. Right? So God in human form, in a sense. And Antiochus had the ego to go with that nickname. One of the things that Antiochus decides uh, to do is to take over Egypt. So he launches a campaign to take over Egypt. And he is defeated, largely because of some help from the burgeoning Roman Republic. Antiochus, of course, is very upset about this, decides he's going to do another take over bid and actually works with the high priest in Judea to rob some of the treasures of the temple to supply the finances for this other trip. As he goes down to Egypt, a rumor spreads that uh, Antiochus has died. And so there are some Jews that decide to stage a revolt. Well, Antiochus has not died and he's uh, upset again for losing in Egypt, and so he decides to um, aggressively suppress the Jewish revolt. He transformed the temple to a temple to Zeus, outlawed the Jewish religion, forbid circumcision, the observation of the food laws, practice of the Sabbath, and in the height of indignity, he took and built another altar on top of the altar of burnt offering and sacrificed a pig on it essentially desecrating the temple and the altar. The 
No desecration, of course, had a profound effect on Judaism, but it led to another revolt. Uh, a priest named uh, Mattathias and his family decide to revolt. Their family name is the Hasmoneans, but they are given the nickname the Maccabees. Probably means something like the hammer, is what is believed Maccabees meant. They eventually gain power, kick the Syrians, the Seleucids, out of control, and rule in Judea from about 142 to about the year 63. Uh, again, we're talking B.C., uh, before the, uh, uh, the Romans come in and take control. This is the last independent state of Israel until the modern state. And so for 1,900 years, they, had been, they were under uh, control of other people. This period, the Second Temple period, uh, especially into that 2nd century B.C., it is a period of a lot of writings, most of those not connected with the Bible, but are important documents anyway. It's also during this time where you have the, the creation of the Dead Sea Scrolls. Uh, if you've heard of those, we'll say more about those in another situation, I think, I think. But it also set up an era of kind of a chaotic politics that created a variety of different groups and sects in Judaism. On one hand, the Maccabean revolt was due to the actions of Antiochus, desecrating the temple. And a lot of that was taken care of with the, the revolt. But on the other hand, there were also issues that many Jews had, Mattathias and the Hasmoneans among them, had with a Hellenistic tendency among some Jews. And Hellenism, of course, refers to uh, Greek culture. So there were some Jews that had begun to develop or had begun to adopt Greek styles of dress, uh, Greek uh, cultures and eating habits, right, rejecting some of the food laws. Uh, there were some Greeks, according to some Jewish documents, or excuse me, there were some Jews, according to documents at the time, uh, who even attempted to have a surgical procedure to reverse circumcision. I don't know how that works. But <laughs> <laughs> so that they could, think they could go to the gymnasia, and when you went to the gymnasia, you had to exercise naked. So it would obviously identify you as a Jew if you were circumcised. And so this is how, some, how far some people were willing to go to adopt this Hellenistic culture. And so on the one hand, with the Hasmoneans, you have you know, this oppressive power that has destroyed your temple, right? desecrated your temple. You overthrow them, you, you restore the temple. But on the other hand, you have this Hellenizing presence. And so out of this come different groups that responding to the law differently and this question of Hellenism, Hellenism differently. The most popular sect that develops is the Pharisees. The Pharisees gained their success mostly among non-priests. Right? So these are people that are not in ruling classes, they're not the priestly classes. And most of their focus was on issues of purity. How do we purely follow the law? Very important for the Pharisees were those oral interpretations, the, uh, the halakha, that developed on uh, that developed with respect to the law and following the law. Now, of course, you know, we, we get our understanding, for those of us that are Christians, of the Pharisees largely through the interactions of Jesus and the Pharisees. Don't let that completely color your interpretation of the Pharisees. Not all Pharisees were necessarily as legalistic as the ones we see uh, in the New Testament. But at base, their desire was, or at least as they begin, their desire was to follow God and to remain pure before God. Now, unfortunately, that tendency developed into the legalism that we see. This is why Jesus is so, um, so much in conflict with them, even though he shares the relig same religious concepts. Right? The important tithing was important, but they got so concerned about that, and if other people didn't do that, then you look down upon them. 
so, you know, they certainly we see more of the extremes of the Pharisees. The Pharisees had great disdain for the other group, the Sadducees. The Sadducees tended to be the more aristocratic parts of society. Right? The ruling classes, many of the priests were Sadducees as well. And as part of the upper classes, they had also adopted a lot of Hellenistic practices. So there's some class tensions here, there's some uh, societal tensions here, and some issues related to theology. We don't know much about the Sadducees outside of the references we have in the New Testament and some other early Jewish documents that are anti-Sadducee documents. Right? So there aren't any documents to survive of Sadducees talking about what they think it means to be Sadducee. And so we only get it from what we have in the New Testament and these other Jewish writings. What do you know about the Sadducees? Right, they don't believe in an afterlife or anything spiritual. And that's about the limit of what we know other than they have positions of power. They were sad, you see. Uh, so we don't know much about them. A smaller group was the group of the Essenes. These were a very intense group. And while the while the Pharisees, while the Sadducees adopted Hellenism, and the Pharisees said we have gotta keep ourselves pure from all that, the Essenes thought we need to completely leave society because of how bad Jewish society had gotten. So they went off into the wilderness, the desert. It's possible that this is the group that was responsible for the Dead Sea Scrolls. Uh, you know, these documents that were found in the 1940s that included uh, copies of uh, biblical books uh, and additional community writings about how you live in this community. You had to undergo a probationary period uh, before you could be fully accepted into the community. And they also uh, practiced uh, baptism as a part of initiation into the, uh, into the community. Because of that, some scholars have suggested that perhaps John the Baptist had been encountering or interacted with the Essenes. Right? He's out in the wilderness, he's very intense, or the kind of clothing that he wears, and of course, the baptism. Um, the New Testament, however, makes the point that it is God that you know, commands John to go out and baptize. But the possibility exists that maybe there was some sort of connection between John and the Essenes. We could talk about a fourth group, uh, which was not so much religious as it was political, the, the zealots. Uh, the zealots were more focused on politically getting Rome out of control. A lot of this leads us into the end of the Greek rule over Judea into the Roman rule. Judea was conquered in the year 63 uh, BC by the Roman general Pompey. There's a rather interesting story of Pompey going into uh, the temple, into the Holy of Holies, the most holy place, and finding nothing in there. I believe that the, the Ark of the Covenant was, was gone by this point. This is, of course, before it ends up in the Pentagon, thanks to Indiana Jones. But um, he goes in there and there's nothing. Now, as a Roman, he's used to statues and, and idols and all these other kind of things. And so he, he, the record is that he goes in there and there's nothing in there. And so he talks about the Jews worshipping nothing. And so they, the Jews kind of get this idea of being atheists to the Romans, to some of the Romans. The period of Roman control, of course, was a very tenuous time fraught with a lot of, fraught with a lot of conflict. And there were several times that Jewish groups revolted against Roman rule. One of the major ones starts around the year 66, when the Jews uh, are convinced to revolt by zealots. 
Rome sends its army, surrounds uh, the city of Jerusalem, lays it under siege, and all sorts of terrible, horrible things occur just because of people, when the food runs low, when the supplies run low, right, there's a lot of, you know, talk about parents eating their children, right, all these other kinds of things. Um, just a terrible, terrible uh, thing. As the siege ends, the Romans invade fully into Jerusalem and destroy the second temple. The only part of the second temple that remains is a, actually it's not part of the temple, it's a retaining wall uh, that holds up the temple mount. And that's sometimes referred to as the Western Wall or the Wailing Wall. Uh, and so, you know, still a very important part for a uh, place for Jews. And now on the Temple Mount sit two Muslim mosques. Uh, the Dome of the Rock, which is the more famous one, that golden dome in the Jerusalem skyline. Uh, and the uh, uh, al aqsa Mosque, uh, which is also there on that time. The rebels uh, head to Masada, which was a um, stronghold, a fortress uh, that Herod the Great built. Uh, picture here of Masada, built up on a uh, mountain type area, and so with you know stronghold fortress, right? Very difficult. So the Romans, over the course of a couple of years, build a huge ramp to get up there. According to the tradition, the historian uh, Josephus, uh, by the time that he gets up there. Uh, all the rebels have uh, died. Evidently, according to Josephus, uh, which his tale is based on someone that escapes, a Jew that escaped and, and returned, um, the men drew straws, or actually the men decided to kill the women and children, and then they drew straws as to who's going to be killing the others, and eventually the last one kills himself. And so when the Romans get up there, uh, you know, they, the Jews have kind of spared their indignity being killed by Gentiles not the last you know, revolt by any means. Uh, another prominent revolt uh, was in the year uh, 135, led by a man named Simon, uh, who a rabbi in Jerusalem had believed was the Messiah, and so he is known as Bar Kuchba, uh, which means son of a star. And so he is kind of, he kind of comes to prominence. Of course, his revolt as well is destroyed leading some to refer to him as bar meaning son of a lie. Um, certainly, the Romans had had enough. All the Jews are kicked out of Jerusalem. Uh, the area that was the Temple Mount now becomes a temple to Zeus. Uh, and so, you know, they, the revolts, essentially from that time point on, uh, end any sort of major revolts. 